think that's on now. Sorry, yes, I think that I'm still figuring out this new setup. Um, so I am streaming from my regular camera through my computer. Uh, and so I think, yeah, I think because I didn't set up, like you can schedule a stream um, ahead of time, but because I was just doing it spur of the moment, I didn't set up a, like a set time to start. Yeah, so I think it was just, it like it wasn't, it wasn't giving a preview because it was just gonna start when I start. Um, let me just pull up the stream myself um, so that I can see these comments right here yeah so that I can see these there we go okay hello 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 yes hi everyone hi Paolo hi Lindsay hi Gabor bit on the brighter side but the picture is really good Yes, um, let's see, let's reduce some of this glare. That should, that should fix that, right? If things get out of focus, just let me know. I'm on manual focus so I can change that whenever. Um, so yeah, I've got um, some casein and some water. Um, and I'm going to be using that reference photo. Thanks, that one. Uh -huh. uh, I'm still really, really unfamiliar with casein, um, so it's going to be a bit of uh, an experiment for sure. Uh, but Always fun to do things a little bit differently. Uh, also, I've been pretty good about protecting my better brushes, but um, Deborah got a hold of some of my cheaper brushes and shoot the ends off of them. So I'm trying to look for like a really big flat wash brush and not finding one, which is gonna be interesting. So I've got this, which is pretty small. Uh, doo -doo. Well, I guess I can also go to not flat. Probably have some kind of mop here somewhere. Pretty small too. Mm -hmm. I'm impressed. I need some bigger brushes. I've been working back at my uh, regular studio recently, and I do have um, duplicates of most things, but not all. Basically, I just need to have, oh, here we go, here we go, that's what I was looking for. It's a little much, but it's a squirrel mop. Just to add some water to my palette here. Hi, Mom. Hi, Carola. 
us. Hi, Stephen. Hi, Lise. Cadmium green. Yeah, um, cadmium green is a mix of cadmium yellow, I believe, and and uh, phthalo green. Um, so, uh, like, I wouldn't have bought this because I do have the cadmium yellow and the phthalo green. Um, but uh, these casein paints. Um, a lot of the local stores have discontinued them, so you can't get them at Curry's anymore. Um, and Wyndham seems to have discontinued them as well. Uh, so when I realized that, I got two sets, basically, to experiment with. Um, and I don't know, I think the manufacturer is still making them. It's just, just the local stores, my guess. Um, but they are kind of a niche item, so. Yeah, okay. So I think I'm gonna try to be, like I'm gonna try to apply my first layer quite light and bright. Um, and then we'll see, do I have like painter's tape here? I don't usually tape my work. All right, well, I mean, I have some washi tape, but it's really, really thin in the stuff that I have here, so I'm gonna do that anyway, just to give myself a little bit of a edge. Um, Also working fairly small. Um, I kind of like the idea of these little, like almost, um, little uh, thumbnail type paintings in gouache or casein. Um, I find it lends itself well to a fairly blocky, like color blocking sort of look um, with flat brushes. So I'm gonna experiment with that a little bit. And clearly I not laying these down flat again because these are so so thin Yuzu did <laughs> I've ordered myself a replacement Yuzu tree cuz just like Paulo my first one just like up and died the moment fall hit um, but I have other I have other citrus that have done well, and other citrus that have even, like this year, I actually lost a lot of my plants over the winter um, because we had a flood. Um, we, uh, man, my life is such a mess. Like, this past year, geez. Uh, so a lot of my plants really didn't, didn't do well this year, but, um, Many of my, at least a couple of my citrus, did survive my abuse. Uh, okay, so that is there. And if I do, I feel like I want to do like really a darker, like here, I'm going to, oh no, that's permasol. That's more of a thallo. I don't really want a thallo. Um, an ultramarine. Yeah, I'm gonna do an ultramarine. Oh. And then 
a Shiva Rose. No, I cadmium. So I'm gonna go like real, real classic with this palette, I think. Cadmium Red Pale, oh, but that's like almost orange. Okay, maybe I will throw in a Shiva Rose. I'm just trying to get, uh, there's like a purpley tone that's coming out in the, leaves in the background there. Um, so for the first wash, I am gonna apply this quite watery and I'm gonna start um, in with Some of this, throw in a little bit of the blue here. Um, yeah, like actually do more of a. Oh, you know what? I kind of like that. Kind of like with the cadmium. That like grayish. pinky color that's coming up. And then this is going to be real light. Um, so I'm not using white just yet, although this is going to be quite, um, like this does op apply quite opaque eventually, so I will end up using white just in this first layer. I kind of just want to um, Play a little bit more with transparency before layering on the white and big thick layers. Nope, oh, sorry, I'm a little bit off screen. Kalamansi tree has new flowers, so I'm having fruit this year. Oh, that's so cool! Um, I had I've had a few flowers on my Meyer lemon, but they've no, they're, they've not persisted, um, which is not surprising because like in the winter, we it doesn't get enough light to really you know grow fruit well, um, and and it was too close to being brought inside when it when it started flowering. Um, so I'm not not super surprised that those didn't didn't persist, but uh, I don't mind the purple. I think that it like you know it's kind of it's oh shoot that's not what I meant to put in there. Um, it's kind of nice to play that up a little, uh, certainly in painting. I guess I, I tend to be a little bit more annoyed with like, I don't see purple like that um, when, when it's in a photo, but in a painting I quite enjoy actually playing with that. Probably the biggest brush I've used. Really? It's not that big. It's like a, it's a, it's a number zero mop. I use bigger brushes than that regularly. <laughs> I say that and yet uh, I actually don't have that many bigger brushes. Um, I need to get some more because literally my dog ate my brushes. This is like some like my dog ate my homework sort of thing, but really. Not my good brushes. My good brushes I protect, but 
the cheaper brushes I just had hanging around on a low in a low place where she could get to them and so um, she got a hold of a couple of my um, just the, like the synthetic flats <sighs> Service dogs, right? <laughs> okay. He says, you really are the ultimate Quiller fanboy and I love it. Yeah, it's pretty great. Um, okay, so then I'm also going to throw in some cadmium yellow light over here. Mmm, yummy. And I mean, I'm kind of curious. I think the cadmium green is, mm, yeah, it's still quite, like if you look at it, it's still quite toxic looking. Um, so I'm going to mix my own with less of the thalo. Um, maybe I can, here, if I move this over here. I can show what I'm doing. You just need bigger paper. I have some two and four, they look awesome, but they are not very useful below quarter imperial size. Right, so that's the thing, like my actual paintings that I use, I mean, maybe this is why you haven't seen me use bigger brushes as much, is because um, what you tend to see me do is stuff that I'm doing on streams, um, but my finished paintings usually are closer to quarter or half imperial. Um, so my first washes are much larger than this. This is tiny. Um, Uh, sometimes having, sometimes the brush you can paint your house with is, uh, you know, they have their place. Okay, and then here we're going to have some of this. And I like how this has just sort of mixed in with my little gray stuff that I've got going on there. Um, because there is going to be a sort of less bright version of this green over here. And then an even less bright one, um, I'm gonna throw in over here. Mikey. 
But yes, uh, mop sizes are confusing to me. I'm still learning how to use mops too, I feel like it's not... It's like a whole different learning curve. Like how does one really use a mop? I'm not... I got this one in a set. There was like a clearance sale set at uh, one of the local art stores of... Um, this is Isabe. Love the ember neuron texture that's already sneaking in. Oh, over here. Yeah, it's all over my house. It get um. And the thing is, it all looks like neuron texture. Like at this point, I'm pretty sure that most of the fur in my house is dog, but it all like. When you brush her, it comes out like this tan color, because most of her undercoat is white with a little bit of tan. Um, but when you when you sweep up in my house, and to be honest, like I've been, we 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 got a Dyson stick vacuum, and I've been sweeping a lot more than I used to. Like still not enough. Her house is disgusting. But. Uh, Despite um, like regular mopping when you or regular cleaning when you sweep up in my house you get this like these clusters of fur and it all just looks like neuron fur. Sorry, um, that is my meds. I need to go pick that up. I'll be right back. Sorry, I just had to go to the door because I got um, a prescription delivery. Yeah, yeah. My new hamster patty has that same coloring as Ember and Neuron. Aww. Yeah, everything is colored like Neuron in my house. Um, it's mostly Ember's fur, but it mixes, the two of them mix together, and they just make this like gray stuff that's everywhere. It gets everywhere. Everywhere. Okay, so that's that, and then we're going to, hmm, then I'm going to throw in some yellow ochre, and we're here, oh, wow, poof, that's a lot of yellow ochre. And, uh, what else am I going to do? Um, mm, some raw umber. So again, I will be using white on this, like, this is, this is opaque media, it does want white, um, but I'm just trying to block in these areas without putting too much paint down at first, so right now I'm just applying it sort of like watercolor. Um, Uh, 
pen trying to get like a, a nice, some nice bright tones and then I will work on I find hot press hard to paint on. I find cold press hard to paint on, but you know. <laughs> well, to be honest, it's not so much that I find it hard to paint on as like, I running my brush over and I feel like the little bumps and it bothers me, so I avoid it. One cannot reactivate casein paint, or can you? Um, a little bit. Uh, it's like, <sighs> sort of, think halfway between gouache and acrylic, where like, once it's, if you leave it for a day, then it's going to form a closed finish, but it's still a very light closed finish. So if you scrub at it, you can probably reactivate it, um, but you'd have to really, really scrub. Um, otherwise it tends to stay put once it's sealed um, and like you wouldn't want to leave it out on a palette and try to reactivate it that way. Yeah, that sounds nice. You know, n not all art needs to be uh, like complicated, high effort things. If you just want to do something to relax. And... Okay. And then I'm going to take some more of this and some more here, some more of this here, and maybe a little bit here, and go in here. Um, I do find one thing I like about how um, casein behaves in terms of still being slightly easier to reactivate is that um, I can be pretty sloppy about my brushes uh, and with watercolor that's not a huge issue like if I walk away from my painting and forget about it um, and leave my brushes you know they'll dry but they're still easy to wash afterwards uh, and if I did that with acrylic, for example, or oil, I could really ruin my brushes. Um, and casein, for all that it does dry, like it's not something that you really want to rework. Um, if you forget a brush, you can wash the stuff out of the brush.
Yeah, it, it forms a closed surface, like a closed bond, but it's a weak one. So it, it like, it doesn't exactly reactivate, but it's sort of like you can scrub at it and break that, that seal um, and then at least lift it up. Like you're not going to really be able to remix it in quite the same way, I guess. Um, but you may be able to um, get it off your paper, certainly off your brushes. Does it seem different from other water media when it's too dilute like this? Um, you get like a very, uh, sort of like a powdery granulation. Like it doesn't, it doesn't fully spread out. It doesn't, it doesn't seem like it fully, um, disperses in water. Like you've got little bits of paint in a watery stuff. It, it, like, it's not really a finish that I would really want for my finished product. It feels a little bit like cheap student paint at this point. Bit like gouache? Yeah, a little bit like gouache, but like in some ways more so, I guess. Like, it's got that little bit of a, like, yeah, like a graininess, a grittiness to it. Doesn't quite want to mix up. Feels like it's like got a little opacity, but not like a not a um, not a like a clearly uh, you know intentional opacity at this point. It's just sort of not fully dissolved. Um, But I'm just trying to get map where my things are gonna go in this painting, and then I'll then I'll worry about uh, Okay, so there is that. And now I can start thinking about, you know, there's some stuff here. And this will dry eventually. <laughs> uh, okay, so next. Next I wanna start addressing some of the lighter areas and start bringing out some stuff. And for that, I'm gonna use this brush that's a little bit smaller. Alpscal is used in medium for watercolor. I do not know. It's a surfactant. Um, so it... Mm, and a flow enhancer. So it helps... 
break the bonds between particles to make things flow better. I love the grainy look in paintings. Yeah, I just find it a little bit hard to work with, like a little bit hard to control when it's like this because it doesn't, um, it's not like a clear granulation like you might find in some heavily granulating paints where like you put it down, it's fairly smooth and then it breaks down into particles. It's like the whole paint, like not just the pigments, but like all of it. So like you've got like plain water in between little clumps of paint, if that makes sense. Um, anyway, um, so I want to start something a little bit more. Maybe if I throw in a tiny bit of this, tiny bit of that. A little bit more of this. I'm just trying to get something a little bit more. need to start if I put that down how does that it's sometimes hard to tell like how something's gonna go down like I think I need more white here to get this properly in I do like that one side of my brush seems to be making a little bit of a shadow it's not intentional, it's just poor mixing, but I like the effect that that's created, so I'm going to embrace it. Yeah, so it has a bit more of a texture, as you can see here, and that's a little bit too much, because with this paint, it's, um, it, like, with acrylic, you could leave a clump like that, and it would not rub off. Uh, with this stuff, I know that it's a clump that big, like, like if you can see visible texture on the surface of the paper, that it will rub off on the other side. It's not really something that I am super duper going for. You need a big flat wash, a wrist watch, and a gray metal palette with the casein. We can do that a different day. Today it's just, just what I happen to have. Since apparently I managed to forget that A, it was Friday. <laughs> I mean, in fairness to me, I did do a whole bunch of like difficult adult things this before this stream, um, I was going to say this morning, it was not this morning. I didn't get up in the morning because my pets decided that 5 a.m. was a time to have like wild parties, chase each other around the house, um, and I fully blame the cat for this. This was fully the cat's initiative. Um, he is in charge around here. Ember thinks her brother is the coolest thing ever and just goes along with whatever his silly ideas are. Um, so he got up at 5 a.m. and poked her until she followed him. And then she needed to go out after doing a little chase with the cat. Um, in general, I swear I had a black. And I could really use a black right about now. It is really difficult to get um, deep tones with these colors. 
had a black. I definitely have black gouache, which I guess I could use, but it's not quite the same, is it? I wonder how that would work with, uh, how the soap thing would work with the uh, crazy water we have here. So, um, we're on groundwater and from a limestone aquifer. So very, very, very heavy calcium. Now, um, I am getting a reverse osmosis system for the house and then I might just start um, and oh, and my studio mates are talking about getting delivery, like, like a water dispenser, delivery water to the studio. Um, so I might just end up using, it won't be distilled, but, um, much less mineral heavy water all the time. Um, because our water options right now, like for drinking water in this house, we have the water that comes from the city, which is very, very heavy in calcium, which is what we use for drinking water. It's heavy in calcium and iron. And then we actually have a water softener, but that just replaces um, calcium and iron ions with sodium. So you end up with salty water. Um, and that has its own effects on paint. Um, I use the two, I use either one, they both seem to have a, a pretty dramatic effect on uh, what goes on in my paint. I've experimented with using distilled water, but the truth is um, I still get substantial effects from the stuff in my water, just uh, even if I do use distilled, because you know, sometimes I'm out, sometimes I paint on the go and I use water from a water fountain or um, what have you. I wash my stuff. Like even if I'm going to be using my paint water, I'm gonna be using something like a distilled water. I'm still gonna wash out all my glassware, all my everything in, in 
regular water and I don't always have access to dis to distilled so I'd kind of given up on that like I'd kind of just decided you know this is this it is what it is and that's what my Very, very, very hard water in Waterloo Region, extremely. Uh, I'm actually not sure what... Um, I'll, I'll look it up for you when we get home, or maybe... Uh, or Sorry, when, I, when I'm when i done this, when I get home, I'm home. Um, wouldn't the pigments in paint clobber any effect that the water would have at first if distilled? Um, well... The point is that it, it, it interacts with the pigments, right? So it's with the issue that I've had with M. Graham, with it clumping, that's the water. Um, and there's, there's like little things that I notice with a lot of particularly, um, it tends to happen with uh, what's described as non-granulating pigments. A lot of them are really, really tiny particles that are actually hydrophobic. Um, and then the... Um, medium, so your, your, um, sorry, gum Arabic will coat each little individual particle, um, and disperse them, but when you have, um, other stuff in your water, it, in it interferes with that in a variety of ways, um, and so you end up with ionic interactions between the pigments, and so you'll end up with clumping of the pigment particle. So instead of it being a granulation where you have a large pigment particle that um, settles down, you have a bunch of pigment particles that sort of squish together. Uh, I have an example of that, two examples of that nearby. This is a um, Prussian blue. Can you see some of the like weird textural things? That's just from the water. Um, and where's the other one? I had another example handy. Uh, sorry, don't don't know where I put it. But uh, oh, here, right here. Um, here I have uh, PB17, which is a uh, non-granulating paint. Here I have quinaphthalone yellow, non-granulating, and this is an opera rose. And again, if you take a look at these paints, I didn't add anything to make this happen other than the water that we have locally, but they react weirdly. Um, and, you know, sometimes this is kind of neat if I'm just throwing paint around. Um, but if I want a really smooth finish, if I'm trying to paint like a really smooth flower, and I want that smooth effect with smooth paints, and then this start stuff starts showing up, uh, that can be annoying, to say the least. Um, and like beyond annoying, it's just, it was really baffling to me for a while. Like, why is this happening? If it says it's not granulating, what's going on? Um, it's just the water. So, and you know, some people who are more methodical than me in the botanical art world, for example, will, will address that, um, will actively address that by Um, uh, using different water, by using distilled water or what have you. And I, like, I didn't have, uh, I know myself, I knew that I would not have the patience to reliably keep that up, so I don't want to depend on it for my practice. Um, but the neat thing is, um, well, we had this big flood in our house, um, so now we're redoing 
a bunch of our bunch of stuff in our house, um, including some of the plumbing, and we ordered a um, reverse osmosis system, which will give us much closer to distilled water. Like it's not it's not quite as completely uh, clean, free of stuff as as pure distilled water, but it is um, much closer. So, um, so yeah, so I will be the water minerals clump with the paint pigments. It's more like the paint pigments, um, are hydrophobic. Um, so I, uh, so, sorry, water has a slight valence. Water, um, Paolo can probably explain this better than I can, but water, H2O, has a hydrogen on one side and the two oxygens on the other side, and those two sides of water behave a little differently. One of them is slightly positive, one of them is slightly negative. Um, you have that v-shape and when you have um, a hydrophobic particle often what they'll do is those two the uh, like oh sorry all of the the other particles will tend to want to clump together the hydrophobic particles will want to clump together so that if you have a big clump of them most of them aren't going to be touching water and if you coat them with gum arabic, then you make them less hydrophobic. Because then they aren't interacting with the water directly, um, the gum arabic is. But the problem is, uh, you know, it's, it's not 100%, it's a matter of degrees, less hydrophobic, not not hydrophobic. Um, and when you have uh, other ionic particles in the water, then you're going to have different interactions with the water, interactions between potentially the gum arabic and the other particles, well, you, where you'll have gum arabic trying to coat other particles. Slightly polar. Yes, good, there we go. You are doing a great job explaining it. Thank you. I'm using like really, really like decades old spotty chemistry knowledge. <laughs> Your camera quality is looking great, by the way. Thank you! Yes, so this is the new setup with my um, recording camera. Bye, Joy! Um, yeah, so you can, you can end up with... Um, it'll depend on the pigments, it'll depend on what's going on, but you can have a polarity of your water. You, well, you have a polarity of your water, but it can be enhanced because you'll have all of the, all of the oxygens and hydrogens, you'll have them sort of arrange themselves around other stuff that's in the water. Um, and so you can end up with various other reactions happening if you have something other than just something that's not expected in your water, right? So it, your paints are designed to behave with water, H2O, and the stuff that's in the paint. And now suddenly you're adding extra stuff, it's going to react differently. Where did you get the capture card? Was thinking of doing this for mine. Um, I will ask Jordan to send a link to the options he considered and what he got. I recently found out, so this was a birthday gift for me. Um, my husband did the research and the putting it together. Um, uh, so there were some off-brand versions and, and a, like, um, I guess a confirmed, a more 
reliable version. So we do have the uh, the the expensive solution, um, but I can can get from Jordan what all the things he considered were and what we ended up buying. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that it was from Amazon is where we got it. <laughs> like, uh, I'll, I'll get, I'll, I'll, I'll send you a specific link though. Uh, it's pretty cool though, because I could, I'm not doing this right now, but I could, um, stream and keep like, and save the stream directly to my computer to use in a later edited video. So for example, if I'm working on a, like a process video for something and I wanna stream part of it, um, I can stream it and then use that, that same footage sped up or something for a different video. I was thinking of doing some, um, like if I have a video and I wanna do a, uh, like, um, a Patreon stream where I'm doing part of it, where it's in real time or even um, live, I can do that. Uh, and I'm just really happy to not be so dependent on my phone as well. Because that was really, really using up the capacity of my phone like a you know, burning down the battery really fast. Um, and so I'm happy to have, you know, this is, this is plugged in all the time. You are using a capture card. I am using a capture card and a AC battery bypass. So it's all hooked up, running, well right now it's taped to my floor, but it's going to be running under my floor. Well, prices have changed when I looked. Yeah, so that was the thing was when we looked at it originally, like when we bought this this camera, um, we looked at that option. It was like, no, this isn't happening because the prices were just too ridiculous. And then when my phone died, Jordan said, oh, well, how about we just hook up a capture card? And I was telling him like, no, we can't. We looked at this, Jordan. It's It's not it's not feasible, like it, it would just cost too much. And he was like, I, I don't think so. Like, look at this, look at, look at what's going on here. And like, so he showed me some links to, um, you know, some people have done this recently and yeah, so prices have just gone way, 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 way down. So I'm curious, I got this photo, um, you can find the photo in my Discord. The Discord link is in the description this time because I actually did that part of this set up correctly. Woohoo! Um, if anybody is interested in painting along, um, I'm curious if anybody else is painting along or using this reference photo or whatever. Um, Again, link is in the Discord, feel free, um, and I would love to see your results. Um, now this, this 
photo uh, credit where credit is due is uh, Gabor shared it on the Discord. There are cameras you can connect directly. Yes, correct. There are cameras you can connect directly, um, but I just have, I have a Panasonic Lumen, or Lumix G7, um, which I got five years ago. Is that right? Four years ago? Four years ago? Four years ago. What put me off? I thought Wi-Fi was crap. Anyway, why pay 100 pounds when Wi-Fi was still an issue? Fixing the Wi-Fi issue soon, so might have to get one. Well, okay, so that's actually the other half of it, is I was having, I was seriously limited in my streaming by my Wi-Fi, which, like, on paper we have good Wi-Fi, but in practice it was shit. <laughs> And I like I could not, uh, you know, we we could we could pay more, but it was it's like the connection. The problem is at home. Like it's not um, it's not the service, right? Like we're paying for the right service. We have the right hardware. Like who knows what's going on? Um, and but I was dependent on the Wi-Fi, but our wired connection is better, and my computer is on the wired network. So, now I'm streaming through the wired network. So, I've got a capture card, I'm streaming through OBS, which is a piece of software that allows me to control my stream on my computer. It's connected then through a capture card to my filming camera. So, um, I mean, I, I do still then have a phone, um, and this has like a really great camera on it as well, but I don't have to be like, I'm not subjecting this to weekly streams, which is like that destroys this battery real fast. <laughs> I'm swabbing my studio in my bedroom so I can connect to the Wi-Fi direct rather than through the booster. Oh, well, yeah, I mean that too. In parts of my house, I use power line, and it's not too bad. Ethernet over the power lines. Ethernet over the power lines?
I want to get a computer at some point too, once I get one I can connect with a cable. How are you editing your videos now, Dan? I'm so curious how other people do things, oh my goodness. Cause see, whenever I have a tech problem, I just howl and then it gets fixed. <laughs> Sometimes I sound like I know what I'm doing, but really. Okay, I'm gonna replace my water cause it is disgusting. Um, and I'll be right back. would be real nice to, let's see, what can I do? Maybe if I take a sky over here, I'm just trying to get like an actual black. It seems to be a bit of a problem because everything is not black here. Yep, that's too green. Maybe if I throw in some of the violet. I stream and edit on my laptops. Always had a laptop, but as I never had a set out. Oh, okay. Shame they aren't as cheap. The, well, okay, so to be honest, like, there's a world of difference um, in terms of like what you can get in a desktop. Like I've always, I had laptops in the past, like before I did, long before I did YouTube, and then um, when Jordan and I moved in together, he built me a desktop that I used for, oh gosh, like almost 10 years, um, including when I first started to do YouTube stuff, and very quickly I realized like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm out of... Like, I am maxing out what I can do on this computer, so I had to get a new one. Um, and it was not, like, it was definitely a big expense. We built me another desktop. Um, but when we were looking at that replacement, I looked at laptops, but man, like, in order to get even match the the stats on the old desktop would have cost just a fortune like it would have been right at the, the even like just in terms of ram in terms of um graphics ability it would have been like right at the top of um what's available now in laptops um, and that's the, that's the one I was replacing. So I'm like, I'm really, really glad that I was able to get, Ultramarine and burnt umber. Um, uh, yeah, so I used, 
I found that the ultramarine, the ultramarine here is a little bit too, like there's some white-ish pigment in it. Um, so I used the Permasol Blue, which is a thalo, and I also then mixed in some of the Shiva Violet, which is um, a, uh, what's it, dioxazine. to get this black tone, which I'm pretty happy with. I just didn't have enough contrast here, and so it was looking very, I don't know, bubblegum. <laughs> Bye, Lise. Anyway, yeah, I'm also really glad that we got my replacement desktop when we did because it seems like the past couple years with the pandemic, like prices have gone up so much, just so much on all tech stuff that like if I were to build my computer now, it would be even like the same computer, not not like, oh, like an equivalent, you know, upgrade from what I built three years ago would, uh, would be way more. So very glad that we don't have to do that. Paolo, sorry, I'm just like reading back in this chat and realizing, Paolo, you said you're doing work? Isn't it like really late on Friday night for you? I'm looking at 800 to 1200 pounds for like eight gigabytes of RAM and one terabyte of storage. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot of money. Yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I like that's the thing is my my old computer, the one that I built 10 years ago. No, sorry, 13 years ago at this point. Um, had 16 gigs of RAM because at the time RAM was cheap. Now I've got 64, which is absurd, I know. It wasn't quite as absurd price-wise when, when we built it. Um, never run out of RAM. That's real nice, but like, I, yeah, man, because just the editing video takes, I just, it's just such a, like, a hungry task. Oh, that's also why I said you can buy a basic iMac that money So 
I'm not sure what uh, like how prices compare in in uh, the UK versus in Canada. I mean, we pay certainly we pay more than in the US here um, for our tech. Which kind of sucks because it is the sort of thing where like, uh, do you do you want to just cross the border and get someone to ship it across for you? Sorry, I'm off screen. I've heard tech in the US is cheaper than in the UK. We pay more here because they just swap the USD to pounds <laughs> and keep the number the same. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in fairness, that's what I do when I sell things to, like when I sell, um, Uh, like commercial commissions to the US, I quote the same number that I would in Canadian dollars. I just change the Canadian dollar to US dollars. But like the truth is it's still overall, like everything is more expensive in Canada. And that's like, not just that our dollar is worth less, like, you know, add 20% extra on top of that extra. But the UK price includes that, so it may equal out. I mean, potentially. I guess it depends on the state, because some states don't really have very much in the way of sales tax. Oh, because then, you know, you can just get more money from people. That's cheap! It's only, whatever, $30, and then you go and you buy it and it's more. It's also confusing because not everything gets taxed, so... Uh, if you buy something from the U.S. and Canada, you don't have to pay American tax. I mean, that's the same thing with VAT, right? Like, you, we don't have to pay VAT if we are ordering in. Usually, although some places don't bother uh, separating out.
This caught me out when buying paint in the US. When I adjusted with VAT, it was about the same as Jackson's. Yes. Yes. So if you're in the US, buying, buying paint at your local places might make sense. If you're in Canada, it's great to buy from Jackson's because I have never, well, sorry, I, I recently heard um, from some friends that they got caught out uh, having to pay um, duty on a Jackson's order, um, but I've never had to pay duty on a Jackson's order, which means that, and Jackson's uh, removes the VAT for international customers, so um, it means that so our prices in Canada, if you take the American price, you add 25% and then you add taxes on top of that. So our 15% tax is what we pay in, in Ontario, um, 13% actually. Uh, so if you add, yeah, 25% on top of the American price usually, and then 13% on top of that, uh, that's sort of an approximation of what we pay for most paints if we go to a local shop. So it makes Jackson's a really great deal because then not only are we paying significantly less than we would um, otherwise, but then they remove the vat and we don't have to pay taxes on it. Real great. Uh, but it does just mean that you, you do have to uh, be a little bit careful um, because if you get a large enough order apparently you will get assessed and have to pay duty on it. Duty is like 20-25% usually. Twenty percent is like nothing compared to the twenty-seven percent in Hungary. Everything is relative to it. I get paint all over my hands. Okay, and now let's do some more of this stuff. Yeah. I get a 
I mean, I guess it also depends what you're comparing British to, right? Is this like British versus being part of the EU? Like, I don't really understand that. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, don't really understand why, why, why Brexit? That, that baffles me. But, uh, like, sure would prefer to be British than, I don't know, uh, holding only a Ukrainian passport right now. Or Russian. Oh, being Russian would re really suck right now. Within the UK, Galata, like, like you say, in Canada, you can get some things cheaper when buying from the UK. Right. But, like, keep in mind... Yeah. Basically, like, the situation in Canada is just everything is expensive in Canada. Because, like, all of our imports have to come through, usually the US or Europe, and then because we have a very high cost of living and low manufacturing, um, even things that are made in Canada then end up being very expensive. Um, a lot of our, like even our, our groceries end up being expensive because we, we don't have the capacity to grow a lot of um, fresh produce, especially in the winter. Um, so there's like, there's really very, very little in the world that is genuinely cheap in Canada or cheaper than, you know, really any other major country. We, we just pay more for things, um, which is fine. There are other advantages to living in Canada. Like, I don't know, I'm having, str I'm struggling to think of some of them right now because, you know, our climate sucks uh, and that's why everything is expensive, but I'm sure they're there. It may be cheaper, but they wait for months to be delivered. That's the other thing is our, our postal system. <clears throat> oh man, it's expensive and it sucks. Um, about half my mail right now is going uh, to someone else entirely, and I get her mail. We keep on dropping by each other's houses. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I love Canada, but uh, but some things really do suck here.
We do have um, some some good uh, art grants available, so that's a that's a nice big positive. We'll see if I can uh, get a hold of some of them. That's been my big project the last few weeks is trying to uh, apply for grants um, so that this art career can actually function as you know a career that supports me. Where's my family? Nice snow, beautiful cities, good health care. Uh, we do have snow, that is a true fact. Um, beautiful cities is... Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> we do have good health care. Thank goodness for Canadian healthcare. Also, 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 uh, you know, Canadian politeness is a is a thing that's widely discussed. But right now, I've been very happy with the. Canadian UN delegation who are like the sassiest, spiciest uh, Canadian diplomats you can imagine. Um, they published a, a, an edited version of a letter that the Russians wrote, like a draft proposal. Um, to the Security Council um, for aid to Ukraine, just like the, it was hilarious. Look it up, it was hilarious. And it, those were some, those were some uh, delightfully sassy Canadians. you, a lot of Europe has uh, comparable healthcare, I would say. Um, I know that we have like one of the most like fully public single tier systems. Um, but as a result, like it's limited, like not everything is, is covered. Um, dental, pharma care, um, mental health, whatever. Um, Lise isn't in the chat anymore, but it was interesting comparing to the system in, um, she's in Denmark, I think, where, where is Lise based? Bob Ray responded to the Russian response to the sassy with sass of his own. That's great. That's great. I am I'm enjoying these this Canadian sass a lot. Um, yeah, so uh, I think it was the Danish system, and Lise has access to things that like absolutely are not a thing in Canada. Um, she has severe ADHD, and she has someone come in and help her with her uh, um, sorry, executive function issues. Um, weekly, like home service, and home service is something that's like really, really difficult to come by in Canada, often not covered. Um, so 
So in some ways, like I know that, for example, um, in Germany and Sweden and Finland, they have great systems, but they are not not completely public. Um, we're more we're more socialist than those European socialists or something. One of the crazy congresswomen in, in the US. What's her face? Oh my god, I forget their names. I think deliberately, like, try to block it out of my mind. Um, Bobert. When Russia invaded Ukraine and made the claim that the Ukrainians needed liberating, she went to a rally and declared that, yes, and next we should liberate Canada. Good lord, what are you liberating us from? Can you liberate us from you? Like, proximity to, to Lauren Boebert seems to be one of big, Canada's biggest issues. We only have home service if it's something like cancer or bedridden or dying. Um, yeah, I mean, there are some cases where home service is provided, but very, very, very limited. Um, I've also joked around in some of the chats about like the weird concept of luxury organs that seems to come up where like so because some things are covered and some aren't um i'm going now have a nice weekend bye paulo uh Yeah, like it, it, it cracks me up because, for example, optometry usually is not covered. Um, except it is covered for children and seniors. And additionally, if you have some other issue, like my optometrists are covered, despite the fact that optometry as a whole usually isn't covered because I have strabismus amblyopia, which is considered a brain problem, not a eye problem. And brains are not a luxury organ, and unlike eyes. Well, except if it's a mental health issue, then brains are absolutely luxury organs. Because, whatever, not in your frontal lobe, but that's a luxury organ. Um, oh, unless you are suicidal, then we're once again on the on board the brains are not luxury organs, it just goes on and on, where, like, can we decide which luxury organ or not? Um, surgery is, uh, like, like um, tooth extractions, etc. Our surgery, surgery is covered if it's in a hospital, but if you have, um, dental surgery outside of a hospital, and as a result, uh, the hospitals who would like to hold their funding for other things, um, try to minimize the amount of surgery that does happen in a hospital, your, your wisdom tooth extraction may or may not be covered by the government depending on where you have it done. And that just depends on where you live and whether the hospital next to you reserves surgical suites for wisdom tooth extractions and whether the local surgeons have operating rights at the local hospital. I slowly bail out. I'm looking forward to seeing how it turns out. It was really nice talking to you. Yeah. See ya! Bye. Um, yeah, I'm having fun with it. I really struggle, man, I really struggle with opaque media. Like, I'm really struggling to get, um, like, these darker areas right in here. but I'm having fun.
Okay, I'm gonna go let my dog in because she's barking at the neighbors. you get to be on camera. That's that's the rules. Come on. Come on, muddy girl. I checked the Waterloo library for books on casein, just the Quiller book. Have you checked the Kitchener library? Or does the does the inventory work for both of them together? crazy creature who needs a walk. You're a crazy creature who needs a walk. Hi. Hello, crazy creature. I know. You're crazy. Ember. Shh. Quiet. Quiet, girl. usually run around inside but you see the cat's been taunting her recently trying to get her to chase and she knows she's not supposed to chase him and she's actually really good about it but then she gets it into her head that like oh okay now I can run around because the cat she thinks he's an authority Ridiculous. Did you know? Did you know you're ridiculous? Did you know? Did you know this is 
a ridiculous doggo. Should search all local libraries, I think. Okay, good, good. Yeah, I know that they like that they have some um, like transfer agreement, but I didn't know what the search function was like. Because technically it is two library systems, even though they share a lot. I have to say I've been pretty bad, like I used to be really big into go to the library and take out library books and I've gotten pretty bad at it where when I want a book I just buy it. Which is wasteful. Would be much better to just go to a library. The library has the nicest hand sanitizer. <laughs> oh man. I love it. I love that like the things like the weird cultural shifts that have happened where now we talk about like you know which which public spaces have the best hand sanitizer. That's great. Amber, what are you doing? What are you doing, baby? Yes? Yes, what's wrong? What's wrong with the little baby? What's wrong, baby? What is wrong, baby? One moment. the worst. Okay, I to be honest, I'm so much of a hermit that I don't go to places. Hi box. Hi 
Oh, um, Jacqueline, I don't think that you are able to add links, like it's been deleted. Um, YouTube does this thing where it doesn't allow links. Can you just drop it into, can you drop it into the Discord? Gluey is paying much closer attention to the live stream now that he's here's Ember. Uh, yes, Ember is being very loud. Come here, Ember. Come here. Oh, no, 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 no. You think you are running away, but you are not because you are my baby. Yes, good girl. Good baby. Oh my goodness, look at this good baby. Hi, buddy. Hello, buddy. Oh, are you funny? Are you a funny baby? Are you so funny? Okay. You need attention and love and attention and treats. Sit. Oh, hi. Down. Good girl. Down. Yes. Stay. Wait. Yeah. Are you a good girl? Does good girl need to calm down? Yes. Good girl needs walkies with daddy. Yeah, daddy promised you big walkies, didn't he? Big walkies? Mm-hmm. Where you get to run around? Are you silly? Is this a silly girl? This is a silly girl. This is so silly. So silly. So silly. Touch and touch and touch. This morning, um, Ember didn't want her food, so Neuron stole it. And Ember hung around right behind him and looking up at me and just huffing. And she wouldn't chase him off of her food because Neuron's in charge around here. Neuron, Neuron's obviously the boss. But, but Ember, who is, you know, 50 pounds to Neuron's not even 15 anymore, uh, just sitting around behind him and she does this little huff puff thing where she Yeah, that's your sound. Just your sound is what you do when you're huffy. When you're sassy, right? Are you a sassy girl? Do you have a lot of personality? You have a lot of personality. There's a lot of dog here. Yes, there is puff. I know you want this. Okay, good girl. Okay, I'm gonna try to get a little bit more of this blocked in before I sign off, although I am getting to the point where I should really sign off and stretch my back properly. Take the dog for a walk, etc. I just wanna get just a little bit more done. Yes, Ember. Shh. I know Ember. It's okay. Hush, please. Hush, please. Oh my goodness. Okay, that's enough. The rest of this is going away. You don't get to help yourself to treat. Yeah, you're cool. You're my goofy girl. You're my goofy girl. Here, take your, take your chew. Come here, goofy girl. Come. Okay. Chew. Yes, good girl. I want you here and I want you quiet. Come. Over here, Ember. Hey, buddy. Ember. Ember. 
Earth. Here. Good girl. Good here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good girl. Yes. You have that. Good girl. Good baby. Good girl. Good baby. My baked dollar chips are done. Ah, uh, what is a baked dollar chip? Is this a tasty thing? Ember, Ember baby, are you being difficult? Potatoes. Ooh, yummy. Hi, Amber. Are you cute? Are you the cutest little baby? You're the cutest little baby. Why are you being such a brat? Being bratty. Are you being bratty? Girl, good girl, Ember. You want to play? You want to play? Come bring me the toy. Good girl. Good girl. Okay, I might have to go off because Ember's doing a good girl thing and she's brought one of her toys and she really does deserve a walk. And I got carried away with other stuff. I meant to take her to the garden this morning, and then I didn't. So she got to go outside, but she hasn't really had a walk today. Um, but she definitely, definitely needs her exercise. Um, and Jordan was planning on taking her out as well, but she is... Um, Clearly, very full of energy, but she's asking for attention the right way. Uh, with 
she has her toy. So I am going to go deal with my dog. Um, I will add a few spots on this later, but I think this is actually mostly done. I'm gonna peel off this just to see how that looks. Ooh, nice. I may yet, uh, ooh, ooh, that was not what I wanted it to do. But uh, look at that, look at that, that's so neat. It's a sketch. I don't know, like, it's certainly not finished. Like, it feels like it needs some more attention, but I'm not really sure if I know how to give it the attention that it needs or whether I'll get around to it. So uh, that's what this is now. smells like a fish because of, sorry, let me just end this. Bye everyone.